whenever you see the local wildlife come running out of somewhere and start looking back over their shoulder, you better pay special attention to where they're looking. <coughs> Well, that's a fine example of what can happen when you've got fence lines. Um, I made a bad shot on this dog, but it was literally the best possible outcome that I could have had given the situation that was going on. Um, literally, this dog came up this, this uh, draw here to our left and the wind from our set was basically just kind of blowing straight across from right to left. Well, anybody that's paid attention or come to any of our long range courses that we teach, we tell you that wind behaves a lot like water. And uh, if there's a draw, it'll typically follow the contour of the land. So I knew that I had to take this dog before he gave us a real good solid shot. And I knew that if he came any closer than he was, which he died just literally feet from where we're sitting here, 
uh, two things were going to happen. Number one, he was going to scent us. As soon as he scents us, coyote gets your scent, there's no stopping them. There's no turning them around for a shot. If you're lucky, you can tag them on the run. Um, but most of the time, you're not going to get another opportunity at that dog. So I knew I had to take him before any of our scent got down here. And uh, we're probably lucky that he's a, just kind of a young dog. He's not real big, as you can see. Um, so more than likely, got a little bit of mange on him. Um, more than likely, he's pretty fresh. Through the scope, I could see him sniffing at the air. <laughs> he was catching a, a little whiff of something. Right then and there, I decided to kill him. Uh, but he just kind of was in a bad position. When I finally got him stopped, the fence line up there was directly in my bullet's path. I literally had to think back, okay, scope height over bore, fence is about X yards away. I positioned this shot like so. Combine that with the fact that we've got a solid 10 to 15 mile an hour crosswind left to right as I'm shooting at this dog. It was like that perfect storm of, oh man, why couldn't you have just come on the other side of the fence like we were hoping you would? <laughs> but I picked a shot, ended up hitting him just a little low, um, blew his front leg off there with the 22-243, and then he got to spinning on me, and I launched another one. He's got just a massive hole on the other side of him here. Um, just pounded on him and uh, finally got him put down. But uh, I learned that long ago. When you got a dog that's sitting down there spinning, keep sending lead until you're dead certain that they are completely done moving around. Otherwise, you end up chasing them over the hills and tuckering yourself out and you can't go hunting anymore. Um, so I, I'm, I'm thankful that I got it put together, but this is one of those situations I find myself in. It doesn't always turn out this way. Uh, luckily, I was able to get a solid enough hit on him to get him hurt bad enough, get him to stay there let me get some follow-up shots in him so we got it worked out but man it was not optimal sat down there um, probably had him show up about 10 12 minutes into the set started the set off with uh, some howls on the cable and then switched over to the rope and started doing some long-range distress we had a like, really big expansive open territory in front of us here so i really want to get some reach and uh the cornfield down there and i'm pretty sure that's where he come out of so um, worked out, but uh, it didn't work out super awesome. <laughs> when we were walking in, we saw this little spot right here, and I thought, well, there's, there's a chance that one might just come up this draw. Uh, coyotes, they like to follow the terrain like that, and, and sure enough, that's exactly where he came. We were gonna proceed in a little further, and I saw this, I was like, nope, we gotta stop right here. Um, when you see a piece of terrain like this that's funneling down into where you think the coyotes are, uh, you just can't you can't move past it uh, if we had done that this coyote would have came up right behind us caught our scent and probably ran right over the hill behind us or, or down back down to the bottom of the draw we'd have never seen it so you guys got to really be aware of the surroundings and uh, be aware of the terrain you're hunting make sure you you know these kinds of funnels and know how the wind is going to play in them yay raw we got him down but uh man I was about shaking after this one. Holy crap, that's, that's a lot of stuff to deal with. I remember years ago when I was a rookie caller, um, we're going back like 20 years ago now, uh, this type of situation, yeah, this dog probably would have found his way out of here and probably would have been unscathed. But <laughs> luckily, a little, little experience on my side and he, he was uh, not so lucky. So a lot of luck, a little bit of skill, I'll take either.